Blakely had been filling in the last few games, and she had been playing exceptionally well. In fact, Darren, Middle Tennessee's playing their best ball all season coming into this one. They're trending upward. They're starting to find their groove. And what it's what's encouraging for the coaching staff, and I won't know what they like to see, is when somebody goes down, somebody steps up and contributes right away. They've got depth at key positions, and they've got experience. They've been through these battles before. They're ready to, and poised to make a run towards a regular season Conference USA Championship. Anastasia Boldareva gets things kicked off with the first two of the ball games. She has been playing exceptionally well the last couple of ball games, as that's going to be a travel against Ashley Austin. I like that set right out of the gate to try to get Austin going. Her and Fisher have important roles for Rice, and it's really critical that they get off to a good start, both offensively and defensively. I think at Rice, Fisher and, and, and uh, Austin struggle to defend the bigs of Middle Tennessee. That's a key tonight that we need to watch early on. Whitson with a little step back mid-range. Jay is a little bit too strong. Here comes Jackson in transition. Rice comes into this game 10-3, and three, but just 1-3 and three in their first four conference games. Pull-up jumper off the mark for Trinity Gooden. Middle Tennessee, meanwhile, 12-2 and two, and a perfect 5-0 and oh, as that's the first shot for Savannah Wheeler in almost a couple of weeks. Yeah, but you look at Rice's not, or their conference schedule coming out of the gate. They played Middle Tennessee, they played Western Kentucky, and they played La Tech at La Tech, which is a tough place to be. So, you know, they, they, they didn't have an easy go of it right out of the gates. No, they played a hot shooting La Tech team last Thursday as Boulder Rave up muscling her way through a little bit too much muscle. Yeah, historically the Thomas Assembly Center in Ruston, one of the most difficult places to play in college basketball. Fisher with a pull-up jumper, knocks it home. And that's what Rice needs to do. They need some production from Fisher and Austin, like I said, and so it's really important. And I know it's good for Coach Edwin. She's happy to see Fisher hit that shot right out of the gate. Jalen Gregory with the offensive rebound. Seven on the shot clock. Whittington got to do something with it. Now three in trouble. Has to put it up and off the mark. Both teams predominantly man to man. That three from Fisher is well short, almost too wide open. As India Bellamy will be the first sub in for the Owls, and Senior Malashka will check in for Anastasia Boldareva. Malashka, the leading scorer on this Blue Raiders squad, almost 16 and a half points per contest so far for the red shirt senior. And had 22 points and 11 boards in Houston when these teams met earlier. We talk, she's a matchup problem for most teams. She's a matchup problem for Rice. And she is going to the line immediately after drawing the foul. Be the first team foul of the ball game for either team. First against Rice. Going against Bellamy, that's gonna be her first. And that will send Malashka to the stripe, averaging 18 and a half points and six and a half rebounds in her last eight contests and leads the conference in block shots with 28. And that possession, it was interesting to see. This is the second time they've played. So you're looking for adjustments. You're looking for what are they doing different than last time? And one of the things I was anxious to see, low post defense, what are they gonna do? That time Rice, Bellamy played one-on-one -on -one in the post. Be interesting to see if that's going to be the game plan moving forward against Middle Tennessee's bigs. And count the bucket. A nice feed from up top from Bellamy to find the cutting Destiny Jackson. Now the chance for the and one. Foul's going against Whittington. And Jackson with a left hand knocks it in. And Rice with an early 7-3 lead. Wheeler 
Driving, trying to create the contact, shorts the runner. Now here comes Destiny Jackson. And good call for the double dribble. Yeah, right idea. Austin did a good job running head on the rim. Whitson picked her up there on the block and they were trying to get it inside and she forgot that she took a dribble to gather herself on the, on the initial catch and turnover gives the ball the middle. Courtney Blakely checks in for the first time tonight. Been playing exceptionally well in that starting role with Wheeler on the bench as Malashka will put up the three. That's too strong and Jackson takes it in stride. Three on the way from Austin, too much. And last touch by Trinity Good. Middle leads the all-time series against the Rice Owls 11 to four. And Darren, this is a tough place for anybody to play coming in here as an opponent, but Rice just one in five all-time here at the Murphy Center. Yeah, Rice, uh, a few years ago, had a really, really good team and team that won a Conference USA Championship. And uh, I think they came in here and, and snuck one, but that doesn't happen too often here at the Glass House. Foul's going against Courtney Whitson for the shove, her first, and that's the second against middle here in the first quarter as Malashka will take a seat and Voldareva will check back in. Yeah, early in this first quarter, both teams just trying to get a feel for each other. And again, there have been adjustments since the last time they've played. And so this is a great opportunity here before this first media timeout for both coaches to try to figure out what's, what's different from the last time and then what do we need to do as a staff to make adjustments now in game for this second time uh, we're playing each other. Good and fouled on the rebound from the crossweight miss. It's gonna be the third team foul against Middle Tennessee. And that's gonna be the second against Whittington. Gooden hits the first free throw, 70% free throw shooter. She's been playing very well her last couple of ball games, averaging a tick over four and a half points per contest, but in the last couple of games, 10 and a half points and six of seven from the floor. Uh, she has knocked down nine of her last 10 from the stripe. Six-point advantage for Rice halfway through the first quarter. Looking for their fifth true road win. As Middle Tennessee is looking to protect home court. As that will drop. Second bucket for Boldereva. Great find there. Courtney Whitson found Boldereva off of the ball screen. Jackson got switched onto Boldereva. We talk about it's hard for, for bigs to guard Boldereva. It's even harder for a kid like Jackson. Uh, she just gives up so much size to her. Pass too far away. Knocked out of bounds by Middle Tennessee. And that's the first media timeout. And the Rice Owls have an early four point advantage halfway through the first. Coach Lindsey Edmonds and Rice imperative to get off to a good start here on the road. And uh, you're seeing signs of that. And the last point I was gonna make is They've had two turnovers so far, Rice has, and they they haven't hurt them yet. And this one won't hurt either because it's a dead ball one, but that's key. When middle turns you over a couple times, especially in the open floor where they can get some runouts, all of a sudden that transition game starts heating up for middle and then everything kind of falls into place. These teams about even when it comes to the amount of points they score per contest. Middle at 75 and a half, that's fourth best in the conference, 75.9. For the Rice Owls, that is third. Five on the clock for Boulder Rava. Nice touch. Yep, and again, that's where Middle Tennessee has that advantage. In that action there, as Boulder Rava got down and turned and sealed, it just was too easy. Bellamy gave her too much position down there as she answers with a great shot. But Boulder Rava, if she gets low post position like that every time, uh, it, it, the ball should go into her every time. Bellamy, her first bucket tonight, coming off an 11 point performance in the loss in Ruston last week as Boldereva again, a little bit too much juice on that one. Good find from Whitson. And it's still a four point lead for the Owls. Yeah, she found herself right at the rim and no angle on either side. And 
that's the toughest for that those big players to just go right up there at the rim because you have no no backboard to kind of help <laughs> lessen that hard ball coming off the rim. Jackson with a runner and Boldareva blocked it with two hands. Blakely finally able to corral it. Wheeler creates space and just shorts it. I thought Wheeler had the shot there. I think she passed up an open three and dribbled into a contested one. Still trying to find her bearings a little bit. She's missed the last three and a half ball games after banging her head against the floor against Charlotte. As Malia Fisher will check back in. Both teams aren't incredibly deep. They don't play a ton of players, but they rotate in and out to try to keep yeah. them fresh, and you're seeing that here early on in the first quarter. Yeah, both teams go about eight deep total. That's kind of been the M.O. for Rick Ensel for a really long time, and last year it was, for Rice, it was by necessity with a bunch of injuries, and this year, kind of the same story as Boldareva. Too strong again. Yeah, but that was a better job. Bellamy pushed her off the block. She was further out on that catch as Bellamy shows a nice left getting by her. Back-to-back -back buckets for India Bellamy, the senior from McDonough, Georgia. Had eight points, four rebounds, and her only made three-point bucket of the season against Middle Tennessee back in December as we are less than two minutes here in the first. And Rice with a six-point lead. Boulder Rava count it. And that's the difference. We saw her get caught up at the rim when she was head on the rim. When you post up low and you straddle that hash and you get good position, that was a really good pass again by Courtney Whitson to lead her to her baseline shoulder. There was nothing Bellamy could do because she was topside. Eight first quarter points so far for Boulder Reva. Averaging 6.9 so far this season, but Darren, it's almost like just like last year when Boldareva really came alive in February. Now she's turning it on in January of this year. As Shelby Hayes checks in for the first time in a couple of ball games for the Rice Owls. Middle trails by three. Here's another turnover. And, and there, Blakely. Yep, there was a live ball turnover right there. Again, after free throws, a little bit of full court pressure by Middle Tennessee caught Rice. Fisher, a one-two step from the other way. It's going to be on the floor. Foul is going to go against Jada Granham, who's just checked in. That was a heck of a finish. It didn't count. It was after the whistle, but that was a heck of a finish by Fisher. And as her foot kind of slid there, I'm glad she's okay and didn't go down. 20 on the shot clock. Skip pass. Jackson thought about it. Pulls the trigger too strong. And Jalen Gregory able to clear. Gregory with the runner is going to be foul. Good shot fake by Jalen Gregory there. And going baseline, she got Fisher on her, on her hip. And then she was able to because she was on the left side of the floor when she goes up into her shot attempt with that right hand, that's right in Malia Fisher's space. And, and it's really hard to stay off that foul right there. It's a really crafty move by Jalen Gregory. Kennedy Clifton will check in. She has not played since New Year's Eve against UTEP as Jalen Gregory ties this game up at 13. First points tonight. For the sophomore from Lafayette, Tennessee. And she hits them both. The best free throw shooter in Conference USA. 90% from the stripe is Gregory. Also the leading three-point shooter in the conference. And you talk about Courtney Blakely picking up some of the slack for Savannah Wheeler's absence. Jalen Gregory, also a player that's really turned it on the last couple weeks as Savannah Wheeler had been out. Been averaging 21 and a half points in her last three games as that's going to be another turnover against the Owls as Middle is on a little 7-0 run here. Less than a minute remaining here in the first quarter. 
and the official that uh, called it there was in front of the middle bench. And I think the middle bench helped her with that call. She turned and kind of gave him a point like, I, I got that, I saw it. Troy Winders, Jody Cantrell, and Neonta Williams are officials tonight. Gregory from deep, wide right, but Granham with the offensive board. Whitson back to Granham. Blakely, shot fake, drive, takes the contact, and she will head to the charity strike. Best part of Courtney Blakely's game right there is when she can ball fake and then just attack and get going downhill like that, and that was a nice job. Jada Granham understood her role. She got the loose ball rebound there. She wasn't in position. It, it, it wasn't a good shot attempt at that point. She kicked it to Whitson, and they, you know, got it back out to Courtney Blakely, and they got a positive possession right there. So Jada Granham giving some nice minutes here in the first quarter. Shooters roll on the free throw, fourth team foul against the Rice Owls is gonna be the first foul against Shelby Hayes. As Blakely has four points here in the fourth quarter and middle now leads by three. So a big swing here in the last couple of minutes as middle's on a 9-0 run. And an offensive foul going against Ashley Austin. A little bit too out of control looking for a shooter on the other side of the floor. And that's a great example right there. Sometimes the pressure, you don't get the turnover in the backcourt, they break it, but what it causes you to do as, a, as, a, as an opponent is speed up. And right there, Rice sped up and Austin did too as she drove into Granham there. Granham got the charge and Middles got a chance for the last shot. Blakely with three, now Whitson for three. That kicks off the back iron, and middle on a 9-0 run to close out the first quarter. They lead the Rice Owls by three, 16 to 13. Stay with us, women's college basketball right here on ESPN+. Plus. Sure, and so they're not going to try to turn you over. Middle took good care of the basketball, got a lot of shots up, just had some that didn't fall in the first part of the first quarter, but down, down the stretch here in the, at the end of the first quarter, they did get the ball to get in the basket. And in the meantime, for the Owls, four turnovers in the last three minutes of game time. As that's a tough shot from India Bellamy. She's got an early six points here in this one. Good patience by Bellamy. She got herself gathered again before she went up for that shot attempt and was able to score it over Malashka. And Wheeler going to be called for the carry. She says, my bad. First turnover against middle. There's a look at Lindsay Edmonds over on the Rice sideline in her second season in Houston, running the show for the Rice Owls. Hired last spring. Looking for her first win against Rick Insel. Gregory swiped it. Malashka went after it and was fouled. That's going to be the first team foul of the second quarter against Rice. Lindsay Esmond, Esmond, Edmonds, pardon me, uh, from North Carolina State. Had tremendous success there, did a nice job, and she's coached under great people, both at NC State with uh, Wes uh, there with the Wolfpack, and then at James, JMU, James Madison. Um, so she's been around some good people, and no doubt she, she knows how to coach. Yeah, went to seven NCAA tournaments as an assistant coach in 12 years on the sideline. Trying to get the Rice Owls to their first NCAA tournament since 2019. As this foul is going against Middle Tennessee and Malashka, that's going to be the first for both. It was away from the ball. She was struggling for position in the paint. As Middle has a one-point lead. Destiny Jackson takes a seat. Clifton off the screen, too strong, as Fisher took a tumble. Malashka in and out. And Courtney Whitson fouled. Trinity Gooden on the rebound. That's going to be the second against Whitson. Second team foul. Yeah, 
And Malashka had the corner three there. And Whitson fighting for that loose ball and just after Goodson gathered it, went ahead and gave her a little, how you doing? Middle 0 for 4 from distance so far here tonight. They are the best three-point shooting team in the conference as that pull-up jumper from Jazzy Owens Barnett glances off the rim. Rice didn't switch the ball screen that time, so they were able to keep their big player inside. Good adjustment there on Boldareva. Tough shot from Savannah Wheeler. Still looking for her first points here in the first half as Austin. A nice drive in the lane. And Boldareva will be charged with her first foul. Yeah, good take by Austin. You want to get in to shot blockers. You don't want to give them space. And Austin did a good job right there getting going right at the rim and making Boldareva have to make a decision. Ashley Austin, the Rice Owls leading scorer for the second straight season. 16 and a half points per contest a year ago. That was fifth best in Conference USA. This is both. And it's still a one point game, middle on top by one. Boldareva, nine first quarter points, and she's stripped by Fisher, but Blakely going the other way. And her and Fisher are on the ground together, and it's going to be a jump ball. And Middle will retain possession with 13 seconds left on the shot clock. Great hands by Mila Fisher really getting up in Boldareva's space and not allowing her to make an easy change of the offense. And then really, really nice by Courtney Blakely getting back and getting in, in to make a play on that ball because when Fisher first got it, I thought she had a lane to the basket. Officials conferencing over the call, and they're finally going to say it's going to be middle ball on the baseline. Yeah, probably determine was there a true change of possession uh, to necessitate a shot clock reset. They say no. Seven on the shot clock. Blakely frantically trying to get the offense going. Drives and is fouled by Fisher. So Blakely says, the heck with the offense, I'm taking it. Yeah, and she goes right into Fisher. See on the replay. Fisher left her feet. There wasn't a lot of contact, but as a big, if you leave your feet and you go swatting and trying to swing at a, at a smaller guard when that guard attacks you more often than not, officials are going to side with the offense and give that, uh, that guard two free throws. Second foul on Malia Fisher. As Blakely hits the first. Five points now for Courtney. Sophomore from Gary, Indiana. Been playing exceptionally well in that starting role the last few ball games for Savannah Wheeler. And she's perfect from the stripe here in the first half. She's knocked down 55% of her shots in the last three ball games, averaging nine and a half points per game. And my favorite stat in the last few games, 16 total assists, only three turnovers as the starting point guard for the Blue Raiders in the last handful of games. Yeah, that's point guard numbers right there. When you can have a positive assist to turnover ratio, two to one is great, three to one is exceptional, four to one, you're gonna win some ball games. I'm glad you did the ratios on that. Well, I know math is not your strong suit. We've had that discussion before, so I thought I'd help you out. Thank you. Always willing to lend a hand as Boldareva just flings it in the air, trying to save it as Blakely Hustles into the front row, but to no avail. Yeah, Third Gre turnover. <laughs> Gregory put a body on her Rice defender. And yeah, just boxing out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She, she had a chance to go make a play on that and keep that possession alive right here in front of our bench. Three-point advantage for middle 18 to 15. Trying to sweep the season series against Rice as Fisher is going to be fouled. Boldareva in the crowd thought she got all ball. It's going to be the second on Boldareva. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with 
Bold Raven, the crowd. She might have got her low with something else, but uh, up top, it looked like it was pretty clean. Yeah, it looked like there was contact on the drive, but not so sure about the actual shot attempt as Malia Fisher hits the first free throw. And they actually were trying to get uh, Austin off of a off of a split screen up top for a three off of a little European off that drive. And Courtney Whitson did a great job taking that away. That was a real good attention to the scouting report there. It forced, uh, forced Fisher to just attack the rim. Fisher coming off back-to-back 12-point -back performances in her last couple of ball games, has four here in the first half, has Boulder Rave a tough shot. And Fisher, one of the best rebounders in Conference USA, comes down with another one. I liked Ashley Austin right there, her defense. Boulder Rave had position when she took a dribble. Austin took up all her space and actually pushed her further away from the basket. Made that shot tougher for Boulder Rave. That was a really nice job by Austin. Fisher with the step through. Might have lost it on the way up. Now the three on the way is well off from Owens Barnett. Wheeler still looking for those first points. Is going to head to the line for the first time tonight. Courtney Blakely did a great job attacking downhill in transition, and Rice was on their heels and had to make a decision. Were they going to stop Blakely or, or Wheeler on the, on the perimeter? Well, they tried to do both. So they stopped we, uh, Blakely. She passed to Wheeler, and then as they flew out at Wheeler, Wheeler was able to just get right by him and get to the free throw line. And Wheeler knocks down the first. 90% free throw shooter. Second in the conference, only behind her own teammate in Jalen Gregory. He's about 90.2. As Haley Adams has checked in for the Rice Owls, the freshman from San Antonio, Texas, making just her third appearance in an Owls uniform this season as Wheeler connects on both. Three point ball game again, middle on top, 20 to 17. And Rice was the last team to touch it. as Jackson has checked back in. Whittington back on the floor for middle. So it's Wheeler, Malashka, Gregory, Whittington, and Whitson on the floor for Rick Edsel. Crossweight, Jackson, Adams, Owens, Barnett, and Hayes on the floor for the Owls. And Gregory around the world and in. Yeah, that hesitation dribble on Haley Adams, and Adams stood up. When you're defending the ball, and the ball, there's that hesitation dribble. You got to stay down, and you got to expect she's going to keep coming at you. That's the first bucket tonight for Caitlin Crossweight. At just two points in the first game against Middle Tennessee, a season low, and she has her first two tonight. It's going to be really fun to watch her and Jalen Gregory go at it tonight, guarding one another. The two best three-point shooters in the conference as Gregory lines up one, and Whitson's there to clean it up and finish. Great out of area rebound, Courtney Whitson, all the way from the right corner, comes in there and gets that ball and gets the put back. And that's Whitson's first bucket tonight. Hayes lines up the mid-range jumper. A little bit too much on it, and Malashka comes away with a rebound. And then is immediately fouled by Hayes. That's going to be her second. And we're going to take a break with 3.50 before halftime. Middle Tennessee is on top by 5, 24 to 19 here at the Glass House. Figure out how to crack the other team's defense 
Rice, 10 turnovers so far in the first half. Middle Tennessee shooting just 27%. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Jake, and I think it's it's interesting. It's It's been a choppy game. There's been a lot of whistles. Both teams are, are playing real physical. Rice got some foul troubles. They played 11 players already in the game so far because of some foul trouble. That could really play into middle's hand here as this game goes on. You see a little zone defense by Rice to try to protect some of those players. Whittington on the drive and center to the line. Yeah, Fisher's got two fouls. Austin's got two fouls. Bellamy's got three. Hayes got has two fouls. And a team that's not very deep and plays a lot of players, a lot of minutes. I know Coach Edmonds trying to protect those players that have two fouls so that she can have them at her disposal in the second half. Whittington hits the first. Middle has been excellent from the free throw stripe so far here in the first half, as they have been all season long the conference's best free throw shooting team. Shooting 78 and a half percent as a unit. That is outstanding as Whittington knocks down both. And Middle has their largest lead, 26 to 19. And that'll play dividends down the stretch during a conference run and a tournament run when close games are decided by free throws. Middle, one of the best in the nation. Jackson turns it over. Gregory got a hand on it. She's going one on two right at the bucket and send her to the line as Crossweight will pick up the foul. Yeah, Crossweight was in position, but she never stopped the ball. She just kept backing up as Gregory kept attacking downhill. And it just was a matter of time before she ran out of space and Gregory was going to get to the free throw line. First on Crossweight. The rare miss from Jalen Gregory. Rolls home the second. Five first half points for Jalen Gregory, averaging 13 and a half so far this season. And the lead is eight for middle. Trying to get Jackson to catch for an on ball. Good job by Whittington blowing that up. Jackson sliding through the defense, but Malashka Disrupted the shot, then gets the rebound, and then is promptly fouled. And that's the second or third time that a Rice player, off of a missed shot, has just reached in and fouled Middle Tennessee as Middle Tennessee secured the rebound. That's going against Adams, true freshman. As we said, just making her third appearance so far this season. Five true freshmen on this roster for the Owls, and most of them have gotten some run here tonight as Malashka hits both. Boulder Raven going to give Courtney Whitson a break and a chance to have Boulder Raven Malashka on the floor here at the same time for a couple minutes here in the second quarter. And we saw that quite a bit last season, but haven't seen it very much so far this year as Austin is fouled on the spin. And that's going to be the second on Malashka. Fifteen foul against middle, so now both teams are in the bonus for the final two and a half. Austin hits the first. And second. And now Courtney Blakely will check in for Malashka, who has two fouls. Austin really moving Boulder Rave off the block there. Blakely on the drive and will draw the foul. Middle Tennessee has been living at the line here in the first half. Already 17 free throw attempts. 
And it's a good thing because they're only seven of 25 from the floor. Yeah, but you got to be able to win in a multitude of different ways to have a 10 game winning streak and, and to be one of the top teams in the conference and positioning yourself to be one of the top teams in the country. They shot eight free throws in their last game against North Texas on Saturday. Is Again, that, sorry. Right, yeah, no, Rice is, is really being physical with them, really trying to contest shots, really bodying them, really, I mean, Middle's doing a nice job attacking the rim, and Rice is, Rice is saying, if you're coming in hard, we're gonna, we're gonna make you earn them at the free throw line right now. That's now three fouls against Ashley Austin, the leading scorer for the Rice Owls, as Shelby Hayes has her first bucket tonight. Did not play last game against La Tech. Getting a lot of run here in the first half against Middle Tennessee as the Owls have been battling with foul trouble. Boldereva, here comes the double, and here's the turnover. Doubled on the, the dribble, so they dug the dribble that time and provided some help down low. That was good defense by Rice. And the tie-up on the rebound will go to the Rice Owls as Jada Granham hits the floor for Boldereva. So no Malashka, no Boulder Reva on the floor with 120 to go here in the first half. Nice backdoor cut by Crossweight, and she's fouled. And a good find by the freshman Adams on the wing. Yeah, that's the second time Middle Tennessee, they defend the perimeter. They're going to get out, they're going to deny, they're going to be aggressive, and that's the second time Rice has got a backdoor opportunity off of them. And this time, Crossway gets to the free throw line. Just her ninth and tenth free throw attempts so far this season. She's now nine for nine. Yeah, she's a catch and shoot kid. And Averages two and a half made three-pointers per contest. That is second in the conference, only behind Jalen Gregory, who's knocking them down at three long balls per contest. 10 for 10, not bad. Four points tonight for Crossweight. And it's a five-point contest here at the Glass House in a low-scoring affair. Gregory step back three, no. And a foul on the rebound is going against Middle Tennessee. That's going to be the third on Jada Granham. And we're shooting free throws on the other end with 102 to go. Adams was blocking out Granham, or Evans was, pardon me. And Granham made a move to try to get around her and got called for the foul. So now Boldereva will check back in. She has two fouls as well. So here's Dominique Ennis from Ontario, Canada. So Jada Granham, also from Ontario, Canada, fouling her countrymen as Ennis splits a pair. Four point ball game, less than a minute remaining before the half. Middle looking for their 23rd straight regular season home win here on this floor. And that's going to be a foul against Crossweight. That's two against Caitlin. And that's going to put Savannah Wheeler at the line. Rice is trying to switch on the ball screens on the perimeter so that they can keep their bigs down inside to handle Middle Tennessee's post players and the the switch I can't tell right now if it's aggressive or if, if it's if it's kind of passive that time Crossweight for sure was aggressive and kept Gregory from uh, getting that getting that shot up so the foul is actually going against Destiny Jackson 
And the shooter is Boulder Reva. So there was a mix up on who the call was because Wheeler was certainly fouled by Crossweight at the same time. So a mix up from the officials as Boulder Reva misses the first. Interesting. So that's the first on Destiny Jackson, and Crossweight still has one. Boulder Reva misses both. Four point ball game, 40 seconds left in the first half. Rice without their two leading scorers on the floor as Hayes is rejected at the rim by Boulder Reva. Eight on the shot clock. And it'll stay with Rice. Seven on the shot clock. 20 and a half remaining here in the second quarter. And it's to trigger from the sideline. Five seconds to shoot. Hayes from three, in and out. Ball batted around and Blakely comes down with it. Shot clock is off and she's gonna be fouled by Destiny Jackson in the backcourt. That's gonna be the second on Jackson. And a silly foul, Darren. Well, yeah, again, it's probably the fifth time that on yeah. a missed basket, Rice has just went and, and committed a foul. I don't, I don't understand the, the thought process behind that, especially 11 seconds left in the, in the quarter. You're going against one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country, but it was a foul. Jackson went in there and, and tried to stop the ball and got, got bodied. Blakely knocks down both. Can't wait till we get replays back. You know, I miss replays. We could show so much more, Jake, with replays. Five on the clock, now four. Jackson's got to put it up and rejected by Courtney Blakely at the horn. And Middle Tennessee will hang on to a six-point lead as we head to halftime here at the Murphy Center. What has been a low scoring affair through the first two quarters. Yeah, definitely just a choppy game. I mean, it just, it, it's, it's, there's not a flow to it right yeah. now. A lot of fouls called uh, in, in the first half. And that really, you know, it made it kind of a grind. And, and hey, man, that in conference play, especially the second time you go against yeah. a team in conference, a lot of times it's going to be a grind. And that's what we've got right now find themselves in a six-point hole as we start the second half. Anastasia Boulderada leaving the way for Middle Tennessee with nine points in that first half as Gregory lines up a three. And Middle still looking for their first long ball of the night as Boulderada has the tap out on the Whitson miss. A rare wide open look for Jalen Gregory. Couldn't get it to fall and Courtney Whitson on the rebound. Couldn't get that put back. Also, so Middle Tennessee just seven made field goals in that first half. Four of them came from Anastasia Boldareva, but she had none in the second quarter. Well, it seemed, seemingly every time she went up, she was fouled, so yeah. she got to the free throw line a lot. But yeah, Middle Tennessee was doing a job getting paint shots in the in the first two quarters of this basketball game. Uh, they they like the three point shot. They do a good job. Uh, getting their kids open for three-point looks, and they got very capable shooters. So it's, at some point, I would expect some of these to start falling for Gregory and Wheeler. Good and wide open corner three as Wheeler hit the deck, missed everything, and Whittington is in trouble. And turned it over. Nobody came to help. And then Fisher lost it. That ball is loose. And pick it up right where we left off in the first half as that jump ball will stay with the Rice Owls. Yeah, that, that time Rice, Whittington was in that corner and she'd picked up her dribble. That was a great double team and that was a nice job of Rice being aggressive and Middle Tennessee couldn't get back to, to provide with Whittington with a release there. Whittington now with three fouls. She is Middle Tennessee's best perimeter defender.
And here we go. Jackson to trigger. And Gooden tried to squeeze in a tight pass. And that window, I don't even think it was ever open. First turnover of the second half. Boldareva on the block against Fisher, and she's going to be fouled. Yeah, and again, what's happening is Boldareva is taking a dribble to clear a little space for her turnaround jumper, and Rice is taking that space up, and when they do, they're just getting body below, and that time Fisher uh, got, got some body on Boldareva. Not up high, but down low. And that is the third on Malia Fisher. So Boulder Raven, nine first half points. And Malia Fisher with some ties here to the Glass House in Middle Tennessee. That's right, her mom, Stephanie. Four-time All-Sun Belt player here at Middle Tennessee. Almost 1,500 career points, I believe. Yep, Stephanie Capley, yep. 88 to 91. Boy, she could play. Talking to Rick Insel before the game, and he said she, she could play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so number 13 all-time in scoring. So Stephanie is from Mount Juliet and makes a home now down in Georgia, I believe, and I'm sure is tuned in tonight. So uh, obviously excited to see her daughter play at a place where she has so many hopefully fond memories. And there she is getting the kick off the back of the rim. Second field goal tonight for Malia Fisher. On Just her two. sixth made three this season. It's a five-point ball game as Boulder Rava gets the kick on the other end. That was a tough shot, and I, I thought there was more contact on that attempt by Boulder Rava on that turnaround than the time previous. Austin for three. That's too strong, and then Gooden, I'm not sure she knew where she was on the floor. Just volleyball swatted it out of bounds. Stays with middle. And another new face for the Rice Owls, their 12th player tonight, Fatou Samp, has just checked in. Gregory puts up the three and rattles it home. She's so good with that little step back there to create a little bit of space and when she bounces into her shot like that, she thinks every one of them is going in, and that one did. Boldareva hits the deck as this foul is going against Rice. This is going against Sump. Yeah, I think she extended her arm to clear some space and make space for herself. As I know you were talking, there's the replay there from our baseline camera. Nice job there getting us a, a replay of the clear out there, there's the elbow high to the chin, and that actually, the officials are probably gonna take a look at that and just make sure it's nothing flagrant there. I think they will review it. Or no, they or say play no, on. Yeah, yeah okay. But I'm chuckling for, the, for those of you at home. J Jake scrambling, going to his media guide now. The sports information director for Rice said, oh no, we're, we'll probably only play this many <laughs> players. And Jake said, okay, that sounds good. And here he is now trying to scramble to get these new faces. Boldareva with the putback. So Fatou Sam is playing in her first game since November 23rd of this year. Just her sixth appearance. Yeah, well they have to they, because they're in foul trouble. I mean, plain and simple, they can't continue to just keep these players out and if the game plan was to foul Middle Tennessee and to be physical with them then you're going to have to go to your bench and Fatou can come in and she's got five fouls to you so expect her to be very aggressive and probably uh, wouldn't be surprised to see her continue to to be aggressive defensively I like this adjustment bringing Malashka in and now Haley Swayze has checked in for the Rice Owls for her first run.
running out of room on my spotter chart over here. As that foul is going against middle, third team foul. And the fourth on Whitson. Good job, Gregory, there. They tried to get the back door again to cross weight. And now Malashka off the intercept. And Gregory had Malashka wide open on the block, just missed her. And Gregory's going to be fouled. Crossweight going to pick up her second. Yeah, Crossweight came over to try to help her teammate and attack penetration, but she got there late. And again, Gregory's just going to continue to go to the rim until somebody stops penetration. And Rice is stopping penetration right now and fouling. Gregory gets another free throw to drop. Nine points tonight. We talk about the choppiness of this game and the kind of it's, a, it's ugly and it's a grind and all that. But boy, when I was a coach, I loved these games because usually it, it favors the better team because they're the team that can execute, that can win a multiple of different ways. Tough shot from Jackson. Boldereva altered it. Another loose ball. Still loose, and Gregory's able to come away with it. And then a travel going against Jalen Gregory. And that corner trap from Rice off a loose ball forces another turnover. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, Jalen was trying to clear the ball and bring it up the court, and I, I thought she was dribbling, so. Now we've got another foul. This is going against Malashka. It's her third. Fourth team foul against Middle. Middle on top, 43-29. Man, this game has just turned into a slog, hasn't it? In so many different ways. Well, yeah, and it doesn't help when the officials are just getting together, and I, I think they've got questions, or I, yeah. I don't know. It, you know, of course, they're, they're not sharing any communication with us, so we really have no idea what's going on there, but. Crossway, tough shot, great defense from Gregory. But again, it, these types of games, at some point you're gonna have them in your season, and you've gotta have a plan for them, and you've gotta stay focused, stay committed to execute offensively, Middle on a 9-0 run over the last couple of minutes. And adjust to the officiating. If they're going to call it close or if they're going to let it get physical, continue to attack. You can see Rice is continuing to be physical down low with Boldereva. And Fatu being so aggressive with Boldereva, she wasn't in a position to help Ksenia Malashka's drive, and Malashka gets all the way to the rim. Just the second bucket tonight for Malashka, and a nice finish from Ashley Austin using the rim to shield herself from the defender. Six points now for the leading score for the Owls this season. Malaska for three. Got it. She just beats you off the drive, so you're a little hesitant. So you close out slow, and then Malaska hits a three on you right after you scored at the other end. Austin's working really hard right now. Austin's going to put up her own three. Just got it off the front of the rim. And this foul's going against Rice. And I believe it's going against Destiny Jackson. Yeah, and again, it stops the transition. So in theory, it's working because it brings a, a dead ball situation into play. Keeping track at home, the foul count, we're up to 34 now. Jake, unofficial. But by my count, we're at 34 total fouls so far here. Uh, midway through the third quarter. Yeah, I'm looking at the score sheet right now, and I, th I think your math adds up. And that's quite a bit. Middle has already shot 27 free throws tonight as Blakely kicks it off the iron, but Boldereva there to clean it up. Yeah, Rice decides they're going to go to a 2-3 zone because of the foul trouble, and it gave, it gave Blakely a wide open shot. But the biggest problem, if you're a team that doesn't zone a lot, it is so hard to match up rebounding. 
and they left Boldareva down low for the offensive rebound. And Wheeler with the easy bucket. Her first field goal tonight, and her first field goal in the last few ball games as she returns to the lineup as Swayze will line up the three and knock it down. Haley Swayze playing in just her fifth game this season. Yeah, Swayze's a, a name that fans will remember that have followed Rice the last several years. She's in her fifth year, a grad student here at Rice. Very capable of knocking down those shots. Gregory in and out on the three as now Anastasia Boldareva with 17 points tonight has a new season high. And that is the third straight game with at least 16 points for Boldareva. And then a foul as both Malashka and Boldareva were straight up. Interesting. Yeah, good job. Boldareva came down to double the post play there. And they, I guess they're calling it on the shot. They said it was a pass, and I, I, I'm, I don't know. I, I'm, just, I'm just here right now. But uh, you, you Austin's, to, <laughs> Austin's to the free throw line. And... 15 foul against Middle Tennessee as I, Gooden splits a pair. I'm glad I'm, I'm coach, or not coaching in games like these. These are those games at press conferences afterwards and the ultimate question because, well, what would you think? Well, you can't say anything. Wheeler too strong on the three as Malashka muscles the offensive rebound. Wow. Senior Malashka take it over here in the third yeah if you're gonna if if you're gonna play the zone that rice is playing right now now like i said they don't play it a lot but you've got to match up out of it and you've got to rebound bellamy kicks it out to jackson in and out and malashka takes an elbow to the face on the rebound as jackson still fighting for it and now finally officials are going to blow the play dead yeah, which is what they're supposed to do when there's not a transition opportunity. Coach Edmonds tremendously upset right now, but that's it's what you're supposed to do. Malashka took a hand across the face, battling for the loose ball by Austin. And it wasn't, uh, it evidently didn't get, didn't get seen. Here's another look at it. We can find it on the back end here. There right there, yeah. yeah. So that's a just, you know, going up for the loose ball, Austin, and she came across and got Malaska with an elbow. And I think Lindsay Edmonds is lobbying for Malaska to be taken out in case there, I think she's trying to say there was blood somewhere or another, but now we've got a timeout on the floor. Yeah, they'll look at it. Yeah. So we'll take a media. Why not? Share with this side of the court, what's going on, but uh, I believe we're playing on. So, 14 seconds on the shot clock. For Rice, Destiny Jackson. Body bump by Boulder Rava. Third on Boulder Rava. And that'll send Destiny Jackson to the stripe. Just three points tonight. One of seven for the floor tonight as Jackson, an 85% free throw shooter, fourth best in the conference, rims out the first. Hits the second. Four points tonight for Destiny Jackson, averaging a hair under 14 points per contest. And what a good rebounder she is, five and a half boards for a player that stands just 5-9. She got her hand on that pass there. As Malashka lines up another three, shooter's roll. Malashka left alone on the perimeter with that loose ball scramble and is the benefit there. Second three-pointer tonight for Malashka as Swayze knocks down the mid-range J. Five points tonight off the bench for Haley Swayze. Has just eight points all season coming into this one. This, her fifth appearance this year, as we've talked about it. Lindsay Edmonds emptying out the bench tonight for the Owls as Wheeler will head back to the line. 
Yeah, Savannah Wheeler, it was a, almost like a 1-3-1 one, one zone there by Rice with Jackson up top. And she was chasing the ball, and as the ball came to Wheeler, hey, there were, the seas were open. So credit Savannah Wheeler. She says, I'm just going to go attack the rim, and somebody's going to have to come stop me, and it was Austin. That's going to be the fourth on Ashley Austin. She's a leading scorer this year for the Owls, but struggling from the floor tonight. Just seven points as Wheeler hits the first free throw. And the second. Middle now 24 of 29 from the stripe tonight. Malia Fisher has checked back in for the Owls. Yeah, Crossway stepped out of bounds as she flared that screen. That was a nice job. Middle Tennessee went over the top and caused Crossway to flare it. And sometimes when you do that, you lose sight of where you're out on the floor. 16th turnover for Rice. That's about their season average. Gregory wide open in the corner. Yeah. It, when, when, <laughs> when you're in a 1-3-1 one, one zone, the bottom person in the zone, it was Swayze, has to cover corner to corner. So if you can get the ball to one corner, and that's great offense, great recognition by Middle Tennessee, then it's just impossible to cover that backside corner. And they put their best shooter in that backside corner. Second three tonight for Gregory as Middle Tennessee extends their lead 62-38 as Wheeler fighting through the contact gets the runner off the glass. And another travel going against the Owls as the wheels have fallen off for Rice here in the third quarter. Six point lead for Middle Tennessee. They led by six at the half as Boldarima goes to work and draws the foul against Bellamy. And she's frustrated. Yeah, and she just slammed the ball on the floor right in front of the official, and the official let let it go. Credit that was pretty nice by that official because she turned right at him and slammed that ball down on the floor. And I've seen a lot less get called for a technical, but when Boldareva turns baseline shoulder and she's right-handed on that left block, it takes up that space. And, and if, you, if you can't arch your back and get out of that space to allow the shot attempt, uh, it's a foul. I mean, it, it's something that you're taught offensively to do that because it just puts so much pressure on the defense. 18 points now for Boldareva. As Granham will take over where Boldareva left off as the sophomore from Moscow gets a nice round of applause from the Murphy Center faithful as we have 38 seconds left here in the third quarter and middle is starting to cruise against the Owls. Hayes against Granham, keeping her pivot foot, shorts it, and then Granham swats it out of bounds. Twenty-four and a half seconds left on the game clock. Great help by Malashka there. Making it tough for Fisher to get that attempt and Middle will hold for the last shot of the third quarter. Up 27. Gregory's three is blocked by Swayze. And now here comes Rice. Jackson at the rim gets it to fall. What a third quarter for Middle Tennessee as they lead 25 by 25 as we head into the fourth quarter. 65 stanzas. So that was a, like we, we talked about it. it at some point during the game, they have a run, and it's it's how you can match and how you can manage yourself in the midst of that run, and uh, that just was too much for Rice here that third quarter. Malashka too strong with the left hand against Hayes. As Fisher left wide open on the elbow, shorts it. 
But picked up by Rice. Fisher getting her own board. Stepping through Malashka and a nice finish by Malia Fisher. Fisher the leading scorer with nine points for the Owls. As Malashka tries to go through Hayes and then Fisher still playing hard ties her up. Yeah, Malashka when she faces and Hayes is, is gapped that much. Malashka just needs to shoot that little jumper, that four foot. She, doesn't need to attack the rim right there. She's gapped. Just go ahead and take that little jump shot. Going high low to Hayes. In between three defenders, and Whitson comes down with the rebound. And then an offensive foul. And that's going to be the fifth against Courtney Whitson. Well, and you'd seen it all game. Rice has just bumped and, and, and pressured the ball on a missed attempt at their end. And that time, Courtney responded, I guess, with an offensive foul. Jackson, hard drive in the paint. Gets it to go. So Rice still playing hard as we open up the fourth quarter, trailing by 21. Boldareva going to step into a three. And almost had the four-point play, but she will go to the line for three as Fisher picks up her fourth foul. So it doesn't count as an official attempt, so she's still, still perfect. four for four. Yeah. And that almost almost went in and almost was a four point play like you said, but. Boldereva hits the first. Five of eight from the stripe. Now six of nine as Neely Adams will check in after this. So Anastasia Boulder, we have a big, big night for her. 20 points to go along with seven rebounds and a couple of blocks as well. Seven of 10 for the stripe for the sophomore from Moscow, Russia. And she has been outstanding the last few ball games. As Adams able to draw the foul as Boulder Reva brought down that left arm at the wrong time. Yeah, what happened, Boulder Reva actually jumped on the ball fake, and when she left her feet, she exposed her midsection. Hayes just kind of went into her right there, and, and that causes you to, to you know, you, you can't help it when your arms are straight up. They're going to come down. So the key there for Boldareva is don't leave your feet. Just stay down. You're so long. Make her score over you. You don't have to always jump for a shot block right there. So it was a foul. Fourth foul against Boldareva as that ball in and out. Last touch by Rice. Middle on top by 24, 68, 44. Working on their sixth Conference USA win is Savannah Wheeler with another bucket as she's come alive here in the second half. Yeah, getting a couple to the rim. She's just decided she can turn the corner and, and get to the rim on Rice, and she's done that effectively here in the second half. Jumper short from Swayze. Wheeler, a lot of contact on the rebound, no call. Bodies flying everywhere, and then an offensive foul against Hayes. Yeah, right right in front of the, I think it was Winters here over here on the side. And evidently there wasn't any enough contact to warrant the foul, but the charge there under the basket. So it, it just interesting, interesting. Second team foul against Rice. And Wheeler will get the foul on this end and get a crack at a couple of free throws as Jackson is going to be rung up for her fourth. 
And the third against Rice with only 7.40. Or with 7.40 left here in the fourth quarter. Middle Tennessee receiving 27 votes in the AP poll this week. Trailing just Arkansas, who had 33. As we talked about in the open, Darren, Middle Tennessee playing a fantastic brand of basketball. And as you said tonight, you got to find different ways to win in this conference. And if you're going to be a good team in March, you got to find a lot of different ways to win. That's it. And, and then win convincingly, which is what they've been doing. And they're a top 25 team. I mean, I, I fully believe that. I've seen, I'd say, all of the teams that are in the top 25 right now, and, and middle stacks up with, uh, the, you know, they're the top four are the top four. Sure. But five through 20, it really can get to be a, a situation where it gets a little jumbled. I think middle can be in that discussion. The right matchup in the right scenario, it's going to be the fourth against Granham and the third team foul as Shelby Hayes has been playing very, very aggressively tonight. Been impressed with the freshman from Cedar Park, Texas. Yep, good physical body, not afraid to mix it up down low. And, and again, hey, this is Coach Edmonds' plan. You, you, you can tell coming into this game, we're going to try to bump you, grab you, make it tough for you to move, try to limit your motion. We're going to get into you on a missed shot and try to stop a transition opportunity. And, you know, if a foul's called, so be it. But that's the way we're going to try to disrupt Middle Tennessee. And for the first two quarters, it really slowed them down and limited them. But this second half has been all Middle Tennessee. Blakely gets her feet set in the corner. And another shooter's roll on this end of the floor. I think I just saw Courtney Whitson hit the gritty. Hayes going right back at the rim and send her back to the line. Yeah, Granham got out of position, went for the shot block, and then worst, worst thing possible, when the shot went up, then didn't turn around and put a body on her or at least try to pursue the rebound. So that'll do it for Jada Granham. Five fouls for her. As Shelby Hayes will head back to the line. It's this one. Four-time all-region and all-state selection from Cedar Park High School. 127 wins in her high school career. That is the most in Cedar Park High School history. Knocks down both free throws here. Hayes, part of one of five true freshmen that have seen a lot of time here tonight as Malashka step back three. And middle with another offensive rebound. That's their 10th tonight. And then Blakely goes right at the freshman Hayes and scores. Yeah, that. those are my favorite kind of mismatches. So often people talk about a big on a small down low, but I love when a guard is guarded by a big on the perimeter because it's so difficult for that big to keep the guard from getting to the rim as you saw right there. Blakely now with 14. That's a season high for her as Owens Barnett has her first points tonight. And Malaska will go to the line. Yeah, they're getting lost on the switch now. And Malaska was open on the roll. This simple little ball screen in the funnel and a roll and a replace. If you run it right and you get the right read, it's really difficult to guard. And Rice right now struggling with how they want to defend it. Foul's going against Kennedy Clifton. That's going to be her second. The freshman from Upper Marlboro, Maryland, as Malashka hits the free throw. 46 fouls called in this game. Malashka hits both. And probably, <laughs> probably 50 committed. Quite, yeah. I mean, more, or over 50. I yeah, mean, they've been a very let some things game. go for sure. Velasco with the pick going the other way, tries to draw the contact and does. Ashley Austin, her night is done. And 
her night is over with just seven points for Rice's leading scorer this season. Coming into this game, averaging a hair under 14. I mean, there comes a point in time if you're running behind the player that you, you have to just allow the player to finish and get out of the way. Don't allow the officials to make the call. I mean, she ran right beside her and, and put herself in position where Malashka was going to initiate contact. Malashka splits a pair. As Blakely picks up full court. And then Malaska crumples to the ground on the rebound. And a travels call. Yeah, Gooden came in on her and, and knocked. <laughs> Again, it's Rice's game plan, so we shouldn't be surprised. Every time Middle Tennessee gets a defensive rebound or a loose ball, Rice is going to swarm to that ball and try to be physical and try to cause some sort of adverse reaction. And you saw that right there. Middle gets it back, and then a foul. Going against Jazzy Owens Barnett. And as a coach, Jake, the, the, the theory behind this is, is as a coach, you say, well, we, we know we're going to do this, and we're hopeful that it doesn't get called every time. I mean, that really is, is the game plan. And a lot of coaches have been very successful and won a lot of games doing it just, just that way. It's first foul against Owens Barnett as Blakely. This is the front end. And splits the pair. 15 points now for Courtney Blakely, a new season high. Back-to-back -back games in which she has played all 40 minutes in the absence of Savannah Wheeler as that ball is loose and picked up by Malashka. Ran into Gooden, but it'll stay with middle. Five minutes left in this one. Middle with 80 points. Season high of 90, so they are well on their way to hitting that mark. As Malashka turns it over, here goes Swayze. One on two in transition, and she's fouled by Gregory. Yeah, that time Rice got their, got their rotations down defensively on the high ball screens. They switched everything. They switched the wing, wing ball screen as well. We're able to get that steal and a, and a chance to go to the free throw line. Somehow there's been 49 foul calls in this game, and Jalen Gregory just picked up her first as middle is cruising. Bray is making her third appearance this season here tonight, and this, her 21st birthday. Heck of a birthday present. Happy birthday, Annabelle, and one of the unsung heroes. You know, it, it takes a village, right, to be a successful basketball team. Guess who has to go against Malashka and Boldareva and Whitson every day in practice? It's Annabelle. They get better because of her. So it's nice to see her getting a little run as finish up these last four minutes. And while we got the time, let's say hi to Deb Insel again, the first lady of women's basketball injury update. She's still healing, recovering from her injury. Hopefully we'll be back in the glass house soon. Malashka misses on the drive. No, we're, we know she's watching. We want to send our best. And Fisher stays with it and has another bucket. Another person close to the program, Marnie Groves. Surgery today. She's watching. Hey, Marnie. Everybody says, hey, Marnie. Malashka in and out as Latore picks up the foul. Her first. Saw some time against Missouri State and Southern Illinois back in November. I can promise you that her 21st birthday is already way more fun than mine was. 
I'm not even going to bite. <laughs> no, nope, you can try. Don't even start. I'm not going down that road, Jake Groves. I'm going to just leave that alone. Let our viewers, let their imaginations run wild. Nor do I want to discuss mine. <laughs> It was yours in Montana? Oh, you know it was. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I can guarantee <laughs> you know, that long <laughs> both of ago. ours could have couldn't have been any more different. Yeah. Blakely in the lane, and now middle will reset with 15. Middle Tennessee on the road, go down to Birmingham, face a. Good, well-coached UAB team, UAB, and then uh, Charlotte for coming back in the glass house. Those games on the 16th and 19th, and then three straight here at the glass house against Louisiana Tech on the 21st, FAU and FIU on the 26th and 28th. Yeah, you take care of those road games next week and then come back and get those three. Uh, with the way things are going in college basketball, you should be in the top 25, maybe the top 20, and who knows? Then you start to lobby and position yourself for a top 16. And that'll be all for Malia Fisher. 11 points, seven rebounds, as she will take a seat next to Ashley Austin. as Boldereva will miss the first, as this is the fifth time this season that Middle has reached that 80-point threshold. But I bet the first time they only had 32 in the first half. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a, a, an explosion of points. And again, they hit some threes, and they just, they just got it going, and again, just kept wearing them down as Swayze just did a nice job displacing and pushing Boldereva off the block and then getting her hands on that loose ball. That pass goes off of Wheeler's knee. It'll stay with Rice with 2.30 to go. And if you're Lindsey Edmonds, this is going to be your fourth loss in five games as Swayze's three is off the mark. But after such a great start to your season, starting 9-0 as the officials reversed the call. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's hard, to go, your it's thought, hard to go through a slump like this in the middle of conference play. Well, you just, you've got to just keep, keep working through it and just keep trying to get better. And again, They've played some difficult teams in some difficult situations. You played the best team in the conference two of the, your first five games. So those two losses, I mean, you, you can make a, a, an argument as to why that happened. Uh, on the road in, in Ruston, you know, and then home Western Kentucky. I mean, Western can play, and, and if they get hot, uh, they can beat you. So Tamia Scott with the block on Shelby Hayes as we have less than two minutes remaining in this one. Rice got to go to UTEP. They've gotten one win against them right now. There's an opportunity for one. Then they've got to make that Charlotte UAB trip. That'll be, that'll be challenging. Then they got Louisiana Tech at home. So uh, road doesn't get any easier. You're in conference play, though. It shouldn't get any easier. Wheeler found just enough daylight to knock down the three as she has really come into her own here in the second half. 14 points, 12 of them coming in the final two quarters. Yeah, good to see her back on the floor. And she got going by going to the rim at first. She didn't just try to, to shoot a bunch of threes to get back into it. She attacked the rim, got to the foul line, and now got the three-point shot to fall. So uh, definite, I know everybody that's a Lady Raider fan excited that Savannah Wheeler is back on the floor. Yeah, it was kind of funny. As soon as she got the ball on that first possession, she was going right at the rack, kind of like that. Yeah. And it's, it's what she does. I mean, she's she's very capable of creating shots for herself. And again, it, Rice has, has kind of allowed that today. Tamia Scott staying with it on the steal. Kept her pivot foot somehow. As Savannah Wheeler is now in double figures for the 10th time this season in 12 games.
Kick out three. Owens Barnett, no. Adams puts it home. First bucket tonight for Haley Adams, the freshman, as Middle Tennessee will run down the clock. And that's going to be win number 11 in a row. It's their longest winning streak since 2014 as Middle Tennessee remains undefeated in Conference USA play as they move to 6-0 in conference and 13-2 overall. And another convincing win. And again, that matters. When you're Middle Tennessee and you're fighting for national respect and, and you want your program to continue to climb the poles,